Yo, what is up, everybody? And welcome back to another Madden 23 Online CFM game. We are getting ready for Season 4 of the Premier Madden League with our New York Giants. We got some preseason action to go over. You guys know what we do in these videos. We recap what we did in the offseason as far as signings, trades, and, of course, the draft. And I don't got to tell you guys what happened last time out with our New York Giants, man. That Canyon of Heroes was awesome. Super Bowl Parade was lit. Our Giants excited, but it's now a queen slate. A blank slate for all 32 teams in the league. And the other 31 clubs will be gunning for our next. They're going to put a target on our backs. The celebration was nice. Why not do it twice? That's the motto for our New York Giants this season. What we did last time was great, but a repeat would be even better. As we get the interception with this James Jr. fella. Which means it's time to talk about some of the trades that we made. As well as some signings that we made in the offseason. Because even though we built a Super Bowl winning squad last year. We don't want to fall behind the 8-ball. We want to try to stay ahead of the curve as much as we possibly can. So you guys see some trades we made here. We traded our backup safety, Killin', Killin' Oladapo. He has 99 hit power, but we don't really need him. So we sent him to the Titans for a third round pick we used that titans third round pick as well as our own third round pick to acquire cam taylor Britt, defensive back from the cincinnati Bengals. he's got 94 speed and my vision was for him to be our starting strong safety over cordell fly as you guys check out the offseason signings that we made nothing significant at all we really just signed uh depth pieces a couple of backups but now i gotta tell you guys about this james jr guy which is yes derwin james jr from the Los Angeles Chargers, we got Derwin James on the squad, which means that we don't need Cam Taylor Britt to be playing strong safety because Derwin James will more than adequately fill that role. Now to get Derwin James, obviously we had to give up a lot, but thankfully for us, nothing significant as far as taking away pieces from our Super Bowl roster. We really just improved our roster more than anything else. We lost our backup offensive lineman Mark Evans, which... You know, if we didn't get that lucky James Daniel signing from free agency in last offseason, that would have been a bigger blow. But he's our sixth offensive lineman, which, I mean, given the injuries that we had in last year, it'd be nice to have him, but it's better to have Derwin James. We also gave up Darnay Holmes, which, you know, he was our cornerback number three, which now means that we're going to be, need Cam Taylor Britt to play that role. So even though I didn't trade for cam taylor Britt, envisioning a derwin trade it actually worked out perfectly and sometimes that's why you just you know make these trades you just gotta you know you don't know where these pieces are gonna fall but as long as you get the pieces you know you know you can just move them around however which way you want and that's what we did at the end of the day we also gave up our first round pick and our second round pick to get derwin james so that's pick 32 of each round funny enough we actually have the chargers second round pick we made a lot of trades with this chargers front office including last offseason when we sent them Kadarius tony and in return as you guys may or may not remember we got a first round or a second round pick from that draft last year and this year's second round pick from the chargers and la ended up just missing the playoffs they finished 10 and 7 so they had a mid second round pick and we're using that right here right now this is our first pick of the draft and we're actually going to go wide receiver we're going to go with a project player because there's not any striking desires need or needs of our team there's just a couple of desires right including at the wide receiver position and we could get a bit faster at that spot why not so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to try to draft the fastest wide receiver in the draft and hey man mission accomplished this dude's shriveling he's got 96 speed the problem is his catching and his route running i can see are awful looking at those ratings like you see the app like he is not going to be a good route runner he is only going to know one way to go and that is straight up field on a go route and uh, as you guys see here yeah that that speaks to his ratings he's a 62 overall but he has 96 speed so um i don't think he'll start for us considering how bad of a route runner he is but um, we'll see what we can make happen we got a backup safety and key on sab obviously derwin james hunter waller are our starters but you know he and cordell flott will be good backups we also drafted a quarterback harrison bailey at the end of the fifth round he has 94 throw power that's not bad but uh not enough to upsert daniel jones or maybe even ty thompson so 
uh, yeah, it looks like we're going into Season 4 with Daniel Jones as the starter once again. But as you guys see, this is Harrison Bailey taking over at quarterback in the second half. Jet touch pass to Deshaun Stribling. That's the name of our speedster out of the draft, by the way. I, I just called him 96 speed, but it's Deshaun Stribling. That's the name he goes by. And he actually made a play at the end of that first half on a go route downfield as we hit up Colin Johnson for the touchdown. So our draft, kind of like the first draft we had, at the end of season one pretty uneventful as we go for stripling and that is put right on the money the rookies producing here and the back half of this week two preseason game against the Kansas City Chiefs but it's still encouraging nonetheless I mean it's backups against backups but I mean maybe some of these guys are playing like starters you know that's that's what the preseason is all about even though preseason may seem like a waste of time right like to the average person in a franchise i'm sure most online franchises do not play preseason but in this cfm the preseason means a lot so you know and part of it is you know learning about the young guys on your roster and using these backup minutes to evaluate guys i mean that's the way i see it. i i tell you guys a lot man i i treat this franchise like like an actual online franchise trying the GM more so than a video game. More than I should, but uh, I think that's part of the charm of what we do in the series as well. And right now, we're learning that Deshaun Stribling, like, I mean, you can't teach speed. This 96 speed is something serious. Marquez Valdez scaling played a big role for us last year, but I think Deshaun Stribling, even though, like, he has no good ratings other than speed, I think he actually is a viable option to start as we do a nice little lateral here to hunter waller and look at us trying to get on sports center top 10 nearly did it oh so close to doing it right there but not quite but yeah i think we can start stripling over marquez about this scaling and see how it goes for us at least at the beginning of the year like if he has catching woes then we'll put mvs back in that role we're gonna roll with that same starting wide receiver core with slayton with bateman and then stripling over mvs and then having mike williams available for you know especially in the red zone i think you know more so than we did last year i, I think we actually learned in the postseason that mike will is just a legit red zone threat like he is that guy in the red zone he doesn't have the red zone threat ability but he might as well have and it'd be kind of silly for us to not utilize him more in you know those kind of scoring ranges when the field gets compact so and that might be a little bit more of our strategy so now we're gonna fast forward to week two of the season we're playing against the dallas cowboys and our new york giants are zero and one so what happened was we had a week one game against the miami dolphins and I was pretty busy during that time. The Dolphins guy was also busy, and the game ended up being a fair sim, which means that the game didn't get played. It just got simulated. No force win or force loss. It's just whoever won the simulation won the game, and it ended up being the Miami Dolphins won the game, which... I mean, we have a pretty high overall team. We're like a 90 or 91. The problem is the Dolphins are also like a 90 or 91 overall team. It's Travion Henderson. Look at this on the first play of offense. He's going to dash away for 79 yards. Oh, man, just breaking some tackles and breaking loose. Not the way we wanted to start the game and what is unofficially our season debut with our New York Giants here since we didn't play in that week one game. So, yeah, we ended up losing that game. I uh, Pretty uh, lackluster start for our defending Super Bowl champions not even show up week one. That's actually the first game I've ever missed in this CFM. So, it was unfortunate. Like I said, I was pretty busy. Uh, he was also pretty busy. It's just, it happens, man. Sometimes that's just life. As uh, we miss a wide open Saquon Barkley on third down. Barkley got caught in a little hand fighting. Now we got a fourth down and two. We're going to dial up Saquon and he'll get the first down. And you guys remember from that Super Bowl week, Saquon Barkley and Kayvon Thibodeau ended up going from star to superstar dev as we hit up Steven Anderson to set up a goal to go situation. Daniel Jones drop back, hit on the throw and still able to deliver. Mike Will making it happen for our New York Giants. Speaking of the charges and all the trades we made with them, that was one of the trades where we got Wandell Robinson for Mike Will as Cavante Turpin. He'll wave goodbye. Coast to coast goes Cavante Turpin. And the Dallas Cowboys wasting no time to put points on the board. A one-play Henderson rush and a kick return. They are doing it in the snap of a finger. 
Meanwhile, we gotta try to earn it downfield. That we will. Here is Deshaun Stribbling with his first career NFL catch. And of course, it's a deep shot. That's a tight window. Got it to Bateman breaking away and eventually brought down by Trayvon Diggs. The fireworks are booming early on. Daniel Jones already over 100 yards passing. Not gonna get anything here as Micah Parsons doing his best to put the pressure on Daniel Jones. That ends up being the drive killer. We have to set over the field goal here with Blake Gilligan up and good. So otherwise, you know, we're bringing back most of the same roster. We made a change in our secondary. No Darnay Holmes put Cam Taylor Britt in that spot. And Cordell Flaw is still on the team, but he is an overqualified backup, I guess we'll call it. Hit on the throw, under throw, and then broken up by Cam Taylor Britt. He's wearing number 29. That's our newest defensive back. Daniel Jones, roll out, fire. And way wide of the mark, incomplete. As we're passing a lot early on in this game, when we pass, we have open guys, and for the most part, have had success. Whenever Daniel Jones puts it on target, need it here on third down, looking for stribbling. And look at the stribble god showing up and making plays. A true downfield threat, and that catching rating, it doesn't really matter. He's catching it. That's all we need. Daniel Jones, third down, touchdown. Michael Trigg just got it in. Let's wait and make sure this is confirmed because that was very close. Borderline, but it is a touchdown. It is indeed simple trigonometry for our New York Giants. And I mean, Michael Trigg was awesome in his rookie season, but that was his rookie year. Uh, he's only gotten better ratings wise. Now that we know what he does in his offense, I'm thinking Tr uh, Trigg could be potentially in for a thousand yard season if we use him right as Travion Henderson gets the catch, but not for the first down, fourth and one. Dallas gonna go with the conservative approach. They're gonna go for the field goal to tie the game up here, and I believe that's Eddie Pinheiro at the kicker spot, up and good. Kenny Nuwanu, he's still our returner. I mean, why would we go anywhere else than with Kenny Nuwanu, who is also going to stand as our backup running back. We didn't really do anything with the running back position in the offseason. If anything, we just let Matt Breida go. That was it. Matt Breida, the super sub, he was awesome, as Daniel Jones is not awesome on this third down pass, but uh, Matt Breida is like 29. We don't really need him anymore. Kenny Nuanu's excelled in that backup role, and then we have Harold Joyner, who played sparingly last year, and Steven Anderson, our uh, two perusing backs on the roster. And, I mean, we have Saquon Barkley. That's really all we need at the end of the day is we force the incompletion on third down. Nuanu gonna feel the hopper, turn sideways, and look at him go! Kenny dashing just past the 40, tripped up. That was nearly a crib call for Kenny. Man, he's still got it. Here's Barkley downfield with the catch. Saquon setting up a first down and goal as Daniel Jones continues to light it up. Barkley outside. Got to cut it in. He does. Great outside blocking from Harold Joyner to secure the edge and allow Saquon to scamper for six. And our Giants, after the bad start, have fully rebounded, have taken the lead, and have forced the three and out on the Dallas Cowboys. Looking for more. Parsons put the pressure on Jones. Still nearly got it to Slayton, but that ball led a bit too far away out of bounds. Boxing him out is Mike Will with the catch. Mike Will running away from the defense. He's kept in bounds. And we fast forward to 23 seconds left in the half. Third down to 13. Jones stepping. And down he goes. Maybe had a chance to run by the time that running window fully opened up. For me, at least. It was time for us to get sacked by that defensive tackle. So... Yeah, we'll just chalk it up as a cover sack more than anything else. Maybe a little bit slow with the decision making as you would expect, right? We're, we're a little bit rusty out here, man. Even though we play those preseason games, it's still preseason. It's not a reflection like of how any team's going to play in the regular season at all. You're just practicing stuff as Jones just got it off and is picked off. Looking for Barkley and that one goes wide of the mark to Anderson instead. Michael Parsons might have affected that throw as well as that's intercepted right back. The rookie Mason Garcia gives it away and that's Cameron Taylor Britt with his first interception in a giant uniform as that's a critical drop by Rashad on Bateman and that's gonna force us to punt the ball away in traffic that's picked off two feet in bounds Derwin James with his first pick as a New York Giant our new acquisition in the secondary they're making plays dribbling downfield with the catch our Giants might have just 
improved our Super Bowl roster with the addition of Stripling on offense and with Derwin James and Cam Taylor Britt on the defensive side of the ball. Back in the end zone. That's incomplete. No flags. You see Slayton definitely wanted a P.I. flag right there. As Barkley looking to bounce it outside. Barkley's got his new abilities. We want to use them whenever we can. Maybe even on third down and seven. It's actually Kenny in the game. Oh, Shaq Mason missed the key block right there. Uh, need that new Madden 24 blocking. I don't know if you guys seen the deep dive from Madden 24 where they say the offensive linemen don't play stupid. Like, I could use that right there because Shaq Mason just screwed us over big time. Oh, Cavante Turpin, he's turning the edge once again. Good return, great return. Cavante Turpin's going to do it again. Tarts falling behind, and Cavante Turpin sideways, up and down, and all around. And eventually, he finds the goal. He finds the end zone for the second time today. Cavante Turpin, when the Dallas Cowboys offense was floundering, he shows up at the most opportune of times times to keep the Cowboys alive. Daniel Jones continuing to rack up the passing yards, rolling, throwing off the back foot. Got it! Oh, to Slayton, but he went out of bounds. Darius Slayton did not need to go out of bounds to make that play as we go downfield once again. Saquon got it in stride. I thought that ball was a little underthrown, but it actually ended up being a good enough ball. Saquon got enough distance, but on the next play, Daniel Jones giving it away. Just a bit too greedy right there, especially when we're in field goal range to make it a two-possession game. I, I would say that was just a little bit too greedy. As you see, Mason Garcia, this rookie, is playing horrific right now. He's not going to be able to pad his stats right here. C.D. Lamb blown up by Aziz Ajumori. Fourth down and four. And how about this? They're going to go for it. Here's Mason Garcia. Drop back. Fire. Got it. And that's going to be Travion Henderson quickly out the backfield with the catch. But for the most part, we are locking down on defense. Somehow not picking that off with Patrick Queen. Third down. Leonard Williams. He finds, I mean, a little Travion Henderson gobble him up. Fourth down to 14, and the Cowboys are on the field. They're going to go for it. Here's Garcia stepping, throwing. Got it. Oh, a beautiful throw by Mason Garcia, who is late to the party in this game. But here are the Dallas Cowboys knocking on the door, going backward on first down. Dexter Lawrence taking down the running back. Second down, Henderson, another stab at it. Falling forward to the one-yard line. Here we go. Garcia plunging up the middle. Didn't get it. Didn't get it. The knee was down before he got in. And now it's fourth down a goal. It's Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield. He won't get it. They'll pull like Garcia's in trouble. Backward. And in bounds for the touchdown. Sensational throw by Mason Garcia. How did he get that off? We'll never know. What a play. I thought we had him dead to rights right there. I mean, I don't know how you throw a perfect pass out of that, but maybe Mason Garcia is built different. I don't know. It's Kenny. Ooh, needed to get by 24 to have a real chance at that one as we go play action on first down. Daniel Jones in trouble. Pressure up the guy. Jones rolling away. He's outrunning him. Now he's got space to get some yardage. And there's Vanilla Vic doing his thing. We haven't seen too much of the running ability of Daniel Jones. Because we've been throwing the ball so well. Close to 400 yards now. Barkley getting away from the first wave. Put the shoulder in there. Nearly getting the first down, but not quite. Under four minutes to go in regulation. Third down. Daniel Jones. Way back. Way back. In trouble. In traffic. Oh, Michael Trigg just must have been. Critical first down. That'll put us in field goal range as we keep an eye on that clock. Letting it drip. Going to Barkley on second down. Barkley trying to maneuver his way through, but a lot more Cowboys than Giants in the hole. We can take this down to the two-minute warning if we so choose to. No, we won't. We get the snap off. Daniel Jones got him open, but misses the throw once again. That was Barkley wide open out the backfield for the first down. And on fourth down and eight, oh, I'd love to go for this here, but we got to go for the field goal. We got to go for the lead. We got the lead with Blake Gilkin, but we've left ourselves very exposed to giving up a game-winning field goal. The defense is going to have to get very stingy here. Dallas with all of their complimented timeouts on first down, though. Dial up Henderson. He'll go nowhere. That's Patrick Queen plugging that gap up. Clock is running. Back to Henderson on second down. Blocking is great. Henderson with the first down. Thinking about the sidelines. He eventually gets down at the 41-yard line. That keeps the clock moving. Henderson. He's been the money man all game, all drive. Only get two yards. Let's see if Garcia can make it throw. Drop back. Fired down the seams. In stride. Brevin Jordan with the catch. This is definitely 
Definitely field goal range for Dallas now as Henderson just tripped up here as we burn our first time out, but a lot of clock is gone. There's not much we can do in this situation except pray for the field goal to miss as Travion Henderson is going to make it. Oh, not a decision at all. No field goal. He goes for the game. Oh, the go-ahead touchdown here with just 13 seconds remaining. A little surprised that he went to get that touchdown because that was best-case scenario for us to let him score. But he did it. I guess he didn't want to kick an ice 19-yard field goal, but... Here we go. A couple of chucks. Mike Will's in the game. Let's see what we can do. Daniel Jones, first down in the corner. Dot. He made the catch and bounce. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Wow, Rashad Bateman moving us near midfield with eight seconds to go. We got one more play before we have to go. Hail Mary Jones is down. We could have ran that one, but if we ran the ball, it would have ran out the rest of the time. So, uh, you know, I just have to sit there, take that sack, and here we go. This is it. This is the Hail Mary. Find Mike Will and let it fly. Daniel Jones for the win. He won't get it off. He won't even get it off. He's taken down, and that's the way the cookie crumbles today. The Giants drop to 0-2, taking a loss to the division rival Dallas Cowboys. That was a rough game, man, because... I mean, with all the missed throws that we had from Daniel Jones, the, the one-play touchdowns that we kept giving up, it just didn't really feel like we should have been in a spot to lose the game in the last two minutes based on how we played. But, I mean, that, that's Madden sometimes, right? That's football sometimes. I'm not even Madden. That's just football sometimes where it's just like, yeah, you know, you can play well for 80% of the game, but all you need is the one or two touchdowns, and that'll keep someone interested and invested, and then you slip up one or two times, because, like, even though we gave up some defensive plays there in the fourth quarter, I mean, we still played a really good defensive game. Like, that was not on the defensive unit at all, but, uh, yeah. Uh, if we had that missed throw for Barkley, one of those missed throws from Daniel Jones back, that would have been nice, but that is Daniel Jones. Right? We passed the ball a lot with Daniel Jones. We know we are subject to uh, getting screwed over because Daniel Jones is not that guy. He's just not going to be that guy. He never will be that guy for us. So, yeah, we just got to move on to next week, man. It's all we can do. <coughs> and we can be happy with our performance, man. It was still a good game. If we play like that, we win that game nine times out of ten. Just don't give up two kick return touchdowns. Special teams is a part of the game. So we got to lock in on that unit a little bit. And we'll try to focus on that this week as we take on another division rival. This time, it's the Philadelphia Eagles here at the link as Kenny Nuanu tried to sneakily get back up and cheat some extra yardage. But the rest weren't falling for that game. Call him down to the 21-yard line. We'll go play action. Here's Daniel Jones. Got him wide open downfield. Oh, the Stripple God is gone. Deshaun Stripling for his first career NFL touchdown. And yes, I'm calling him the Stribble God. That is his official, unofficial nickname. Deshaun Stribbling, the Stribble God. I feel like it just rolls right off the tongue. Off the back foot, Trick May. You can see the incredible arm talent of Drake May on display, but the accuracy will leave a little bit of something to be desired on a throw off the back foot as we have a third down and four. We're going to go RPO to Trick. Oh, that worked out perfectly. We got a nice little pick play on that block, but... Um, once again, our throwing to open people, it's a little concerning right now. It's a little more concerning than it should be. Jones, triple coverage, and caught Mike Will making it happen. But I don't know how in the world he made that happen as Kayvon Thibodeau not able to get Derrick Henry. And that's big because, as you guys noticed in the pregame, we have a dev story today to get Kayvon Thibodeau from Superstar to X-Factor. We need, a, we need a big game, a huge game from Tibbs. Three tackles for loss. Not really out of the realm by any means. Kayvon Thibodeau is more than capable of a game like that if he's healthy. Of course. I mean, Madden 101 in franchise. You play franchise mode, you get a dev story, the guy gets hurt. Fourth down and three. Let's focus on getting this stop here. May with the pump fake. Balls out at the last second. Recovered by Philly, but it's a turnover nonetheless. May indecisive and lost it. As we await the diagnosis on Kayvon Thibodeau, downfield is Slayton with the catch. And you see Kayvon Thibodeau is okay to go. And a tough decision to make right there. Do we risk Kayvon Thibodeau? Wait a second. Wide open. Way too easy. Taking candy from a baby. Rashad Bateman for the touchdown. But yeah, we either risk re-injury with Kayvon Thibodeau. 
or you know we chase the dev and in this case i don't think going from superstar to x factor is really you know a crazy chase for us so we'll play it a bit more smart a bit more conservative with Kayvon Timido if he gets it he gets it but he probably won't in this scenario so uh, we'll see how long Kayvon is out for the game for that high risk tells me it'll probably be at least a quarter second down Daniel Jones wide open I mean look our passing attack this is a different passing attack than we had last year in the, the first couple of games that we've had so far we're already at 200 yards and we barely started the second quarter but we're going to encounter a little bit of a uh, hiccup, we'll call it, where the Eagles user messaged me at about this point of the game. He was like, the lag is unbearable. I can't play this game. So what he, the deal that we made was I let him quit the game. I let him restart his router, whatever it may be. But we're going to resume the game based on where it was before he quit. Otherwise, like, if he didn't agree to that, then, I mean, he can have fun lagging for the rest of the game. I don't give a damn. But uh, if we agree to recreate the situation from before, you know, I'm okay with that. So we're at, I'm actually going to be a little nice to him. I'm not going to recreate the full situation. We're going to start playing from right here. When we actually uh, quit the game, as Saquon Barkley gets a big gain... Huge game for Saquon Barkley using that evasive ability to juke his way to the Eagles 46 yard line. But yeah, we actually had a second down a goal. So, you know, I just started my drive my own 25 or whatever it was. So, I, I kind of did him a favor in that case. I was like, all right, man, if you were lagging to get down, I'll, I'll spare you a little bit. But, I and mean, we still have a lead that we probably shouldn't fold, you would think as Andrew Thomas is injured. Now, this is where losing Mark Evans got hurt. If offensive linemen start getting hurt, Mark Evans was our swing guy or sixth guy as fourth down and two. We're going to go for it, going to Mike Will, and that's blown up. Stribbling outside was the one who did not hold up his block, I believe, on Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. And, you know, I probably should have flipped that scenario where Mike Will was blocking. He would have been much better blocking, but I didn't really think that went through, as you guys can tell. Hit pointer. That's going to knock Andrew Thomas out for the rest of the game. As you see, Kayvon Thibodeau's numbers. By the way, while we were recreating this game, I didn't tell my guy that I had a dev story for Kayvon Thibodeau. While he was just getting tackled for loss, while we were trying to recreate this game, since he had... I like, wasn't really able to play offense much because he had no offensive stats to get besides a field goal. As Michael Trigg, man, this guy's got a catch radius the size of the ocean right now. But yeah, while, while we're recreating, I may or may not have cheekily gotten Kayvon Thibodeau uh, some tackles for the dev, man. It, it's just part of the game. It's part of the game. But it worked out for us because, I mean, now all of a sudden we're on pace. And remember, Kayvon got hurt. So part of the recreate allowed Kayvon Thibodeau to heal up. Perfect. Oh, this is perfect as well. Saquon Barkley jumping for joy by Joey Porter Jr. Hello, end zone. Saquon, superb. And now we got ourselves a nice little 28-3 lead. We did come out a little bit. Oh, man, this is bad. And lucky to not be intercepted was Drake May. But, yeah, we came out a little bit sluggish after the recreate, which is natural, right? We had a lot of momentum, and while doing a whole recreate and all that, you kind of lose that flow that you had in your offensive play calling and all that. So, you know, like that fourth down and two from Mike Will, I probably would have not done that. You know, we were still playing within that first, you know, flow of the game. But, like I said, we took over 21-3. to three. If we bow down lead... It, uh, if he fixes this connection, no matter who it is, it's a bad look on us. Is we're gonna? Uh, I don't know why the hell I high threw that one, but it is gonna work to Deshaun Stribling. The high throw actually got Stribling crushed in the middle of the field, but yeah, we'll make it work. Second down and three, holding and intercepted. Nicobe Dean with the pick. Not sure what we saw on that play. It looked like we were throwing a pick. If I mean downfield. If we got that off to the intended target, it looked like it was Slayton in the back of the end zone and double coverage. Speaking of double coverage, that's intercepted. Derwin James, he's got eyes on the ball. Derwin with a move in the open field by Dallas Goddard. Derwin hugging the sidelines and a great return by Derwin James. But it's the last play of the first half, so we need to get to the end zone to make it count. So the defense is playing really well right now. Downfield, the offense not too bad itself. Deshaun Stripling for his second touchdown of the game. The first play of the drive is the last play of the drive as this triple god takes the top off the defense. Like I said, you can't teach speed. 
And we are definitely learning that right now with this offense at this 96 speed. And keep in mind, Deshaun Stripling is 6'3". It's not like a Darius Tony who was 5'11 with 95 speed and seemed to drop half of the passes that we threw to him because if somebody was, you know, within breeding space of that man, he would drop it. Fourth down and seven. Trick May feeling that he just got it off. And it's not picked off, but it's actually better that it wasn't picked off so we can take over uh, pretty much outside of the red zone here. Third down and eight. Daniel Jones can Test the catch here by Barkley. Uh, not going to risk a turnover in that situation. We're up 35-3. to three. We're doing pretty good in this game. It must, must be sad. So we'll just take our points off the turnover on down. So uh, Kayvon Thibodeau with another half sack to add to his name. Cam Taylor Britt in there as well. And um, yeah, it's like we aren't even missing Darnay Holmes out there. I, I'm, I'm sure uh, the Chargers, they obviously needed the depth to get Darnay Holmes in their secondary. But for us, you know, we got Cam Taylor Britt. He is... Fitting in like a glove right now. Perfection is Mike Will with the catch here. We got the backups in the game right now, which does include Mike Will since he's our wide receiver number four. But we're getting our first look at the rookie Harrison Bailey at the quarterback position. Put him in over Ty Thompson because Harrison Bailey, as Harold Joyner gets the touchdown here, actually got superstar dev. So I forgot to mention this about, uh, you know, because we barely got any rookies. But um, as you guys may know, with this franchise, the way as this is actually, believe it or not, going to be a touchdown to the rookie Isaiah Bond, top 10 draft pick for Philly. I don't know how he got that over Hunter Waller, man. I'm pretty sure that dude, not Bond, has like 96 speed too. So um, speed kills both ways, right? But uh, yeah, um, out of the four guys that we drafted, Harrison Bailey actually got superstar dev. The reason why you don't see the star under his name is because he does not have any superstar abilities yet. He's only a 69 overall or 68. You need to get a 70 overall to get your first superstar ability. So that's why we are not seeing that. But he is a superstar. So, uh, you know, if he is superstar dev, especially if Daniel Jones is screwing around a little bit too much, it's worth taking a look at. But as far as today... I mean, Daniel Jones, obviously these numbers aren't reflective of what happened in the game because part of it is the recreate and all that, but I mean, still, um, Daniel Jones did enough, but as it was last year, Daniel Jones, he's uh, under the microscope right now. Like, the mistakes he make, they keep compiling, and most importantly, if we start losing games because of Daniel Jones, like we did last week against Dallas, that's where my fuse shortens. If we win games and Daniel Jones is doing, you know, some screw around stuff, I can live with it. But we start losing because of Daniel Jones, that's when we can't take it. That's when we have to make a change. That's when we need to bring in that spark plug. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. We won this week, so Daniel Jones is off the hook. I don't know when Dexter Lawrence got hurt, but he got hurt at some point. So, Sexy Dexy, he's on the shelf for the next month. And that means uh, Tristan Hill, who we signed in the offseason from Dallas... He is going to take over that starting defensive tackle role. And whenever we come out, nickel sets, he'll be in there along with Big Leonard Williams. Kayvon Thibodeau is now a superstar X-Factor. Nice buildup we've had with Kayvon over the cycle so far. Obviously, when we took over these Giants, Kayvon Thibodeau was one of the guys that we circled as a blue chip player. This is a guy that we could develop, and if we develop him the right way, the ceiling is not even the max. All right? Like, you can go to the sky, go to the stratosphere. For what his potential reaches and we're starting to see that now with Kayvon Thibodeau. Ajun Ward was also one of those guys but we didn't quite expect him to take the leap that he did especially so quickly. Ajun Ward actually is a higher overall than Kayvon Thibodeau because that man has been superstar and superstar x-factor from the jump almost from like season two and on. Now Kayvon Thibodeau he has a chance to you know race Aziz Ajun Ward into the 90 overalls and up. So that would be fun for us. Like I said, we are improving this roster, but we got to improve our record. That's very important because we are 1-2 and two entering this week. That was a feel-good win, but, you know, especially because of that sim loss, we are a little bit working from behind right now as we are underway in the Motown of Detroit taking on the Lions. The Lions have not exactly been a contender so far in this franchise. I don't think they've made the playoffs once, but they have one of the better rosters in the league. So we got to keep that in mind. Respect that. Now, I believe they are without Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams is injured for this game, I believe. So um, that's 
Oh, man, that's intercepted by Derwin James. He's gotten a pick in every game we've played so far. The value of Derwin James, it has not taken long to figure out what a 95 overall safety can do for your secondary. Jones downfield. He wants dribbling. Beats Okuda with the catch. It's the triple god downfield. Like I said, he can only run one route. But it's a damn good route, and it's a good-looking go around downfield. And that dude, he goes. That's not going to be a first down trick with the catch, but working back to the ball ends up two yards short of the first down. We're on the field to go for it. We will go for it. Daniel Jones just got it in there, and a great catch in a tight window by Darius Slayton as Barkley nearly falls forward into the end zone. We go to no huddle on second down. We'll give Barkley another chance to get at it. Maybe Daniel Jones on the keeper. That's the way he's designed. But Jones not quite able to sneak in. Bumper pool shuts it down. Now it's third down and goal. And this time, Daniel Jones will not be denied. Vanilla Vic into the end zone for the first point of the game for our New York Giants as Leonard Williams not able to make the tackle but our new superstar X Factor Cave on Thibodeau doing his thing now you'll notice the Detroit Lions they do have Devontae Adams no Jamison Williams so don't have to worry about the 99 speed or 98 whatever he has but um, they have Elijah Cooks who's pretty fast pretty tall pretty athletic as Kenny McIntosh is none of those things but he will still score a 59 yard touchdown right on our dome I don't know how in the world we get up a touchdown to Kenny McIntosh, of all people, but we've done it as Kenny Nwanu will get blown up at his own 16-yard line. Remember, Kenny was a second half of the season kind of player. It's looking like we're going to need the first half to work Kenny into shape once again. Downfield, stripling, not going to get it. And you see Dane Belton breaking that pass up. That's the former New York Giant. Remember, we traded away Belton in last year's offseason for early second-round pick from the Detroit Lions that we eventually use to trade for David Bakhtiari as Daniel Jones throws that one to the moon and incomplete. So, yeah, that's the Dane Belton follow-up. Now we're seeing where he is present day. Starting back there for the Lions. We'll go play action. Here's Daniel Jones, middle of the field. Barkley clobbered. Bumper pool making it happen. But Michael Trigg on the next play. Catch and run. Making a man miss. Trigg tripped up. Inches short of the end zone. Oh, man. Michael Trigg robbed of the touchdown. And so is Darius Slayton because for some reason our bubble throwing seems to be off. Oh, Anderson pushed into the end zone. One of the Lions actually pushes Steven Anderson in when they had that play absolutely blown up as Derwin James blowing a play up, making that tackle for loss. Last play of the first quarter, perhaps. Baker Mayfield under pressure, and a force out by Derwin James will force the incompletion and the punt by Detroit. Looking for the big play downfield, Daniel Jones. We finally got to throw on the run with Daniel Jones. It seemed like it was impossible to do, but we got one to Slayton. This will go underneath. This will be caught. Here's Bateman on the move. Slayton and Bateman, man. Those guys, they just got to work the underneath and occasionally get over the top. That's their job is Daniel Jones. Vanilla Vic, we know what he's all about. He gets to the four-yard line. Barkley looking to hammer it in. A oh, horrific run stick by me right there. The blocking was so good. And I did everything I could to sabotage that play. Second down, Jones rolling out. He's looking for the end zone now. And Vanilla Vic is in. That's Daniel Jones' second rushing touchdown of the afternoon. <coughs> As you guys see, the Lions are actually going to lose Aiden Hutchinson for the rest of the game on that touchdown run. Broken ribs. So that's going to take out their best pass rusher, which is obviously a blessing for us. Not that we really needed it. Our offensive line is doing pretty good so far, but it is nice as, man, it is great to have Devontae Adams working the middle of the field. You can throw a pass like that without any fear. Mayfield is down. Kayvon Thibodeau will get credited with the sack. Mayfield not able to break the pocket. Mayfield hit on this throw, and that's a pop fly picked off by a Dore Jackson. This is a Dory's first pick of the year, and on the return, Adore Jackson turns the corner. He's got to be Taylor Price. Cannot. Oh, man. Adore Jackson, he was looking for the end zone. We had our eyes. We, we were ready to celebrate. I was thinking about what touchdown celebration I was going to choose with Adore, but <clears throat> unfortunately, 
Not only do we not get to that point, we are not going to get to that point with our offense either on this drive as we end up settling for the field goal. Pretty good coverage by Detroit on third down. I just tried to throw up a jump ball for Saquon and uh, yeah, went pretty predictably. As we're getting close to the two minute warning here, Lions down by 17. This will help. This will take a big bite out of the yard needed to get downfield. That's TJ Hawkinson on the catch. Hawkinson again, somehow warping through Derwin James to make that grab to the 21 yard line. Not sure why that keeps working, but it does. Hawkinson, yeah, he check. That is a true he check. To the nine yard line goes TJ and the Lions. Baker Mayfield, one more time on the run. It's a touchdown. Mitchell with the grab. Mayfield out of control and throws it to the perfect spot. I don't know what is up with the opposing quarterbacks just throwing passes like that, but that seems to be a common theme. Oh, Stripling turns on the Jets. Stripling by Okuda all the way to the 29-yard line before the former giant Dane Belton finally puts a stop to that play. But the Stripple God is loose once again. To the 12-yard line we go. Slayton making the catch. Lead block by the backup left guard due to the absence of Andrew Thomas. You guys saw he is out for a month. Here's a second down. Here's Daniel Jones looking. Nothing's there. Rolling out. Buying time once again. But we can't quite turn that corner. We got to throw it away. Third down at the Wildcat. Jones giving it to Barkley. Can he make a move? One on one with Dane Belton. And we're not going to get the first down here. And I mean, let's see what we do on fourth down. We're on the field. Do we go for it? Barkley's in the backfield. We're not going to go for it. We get a false start, but I was going to get a delay of game. We didn't get that false start. Just got to try to, you know, fake hike it a few times, see if we draw them off sides, right? It doesn't really work in Madden, but I mean, if it ever does, got to find out. As Kayvon Thibodeau, pretty mean by Kayvon on a simple run to end halftime to get the tackle for loss. But Kayvon Thibodeau has been absolutely ruthless so far this year. As we start the second half with Deshaun Stripling, the newest breakout star in this Giants offense. Deshaun Stripling to the 32-yard line. Next play, Daniel Jones to Trigg, who can't make the catch. Michael Trigg has been a little bit silent the past couple of weeks, or the past week, I should say. He was pretty good in that Philly game, but... You know, partially because Deshaun Shriveling has been so dominant so far as we get the runoff with Kenny Nuwanu. 13-point lead. It feels like we've been controlling this game, but if we don't get a first down here, it could get a pretty dicey, but don't worry about that. Saquon Barkley's on the case. Barkley to the outside. A stiff arm. Oh, Barkley refuses to go down until the cavalry of Lions show up. Man, oh man, Saquon is a weapon out there with his new abilities. Third down and nine, Daniel Jones drop back, looking outside. Williams thrown down to the ground. Two Lions on the scene dropping Williams down. And we end up settling for our third field goal of the game. And our inability to finish these drives off, it's keeping the game close. But, I mean, if the Lions do stuff like that, it won't be close for much longer. And you got to think at some point we're going to figure out how to get into this end zone. Uh, I don't know how that wasn't intercepted, but we'll take the stop on third down. Kenne, yeah, I think we're trying to do a little bit too much with Kenne Nuanu in the return game right now. Daniel Jones, good enough for the first down as he's able to stretch it outside, move the chains, drop back Jones, first down, outside. Michael Trigg with the catch. In one-on-one -on -one coverage, I think Michael Trigg is the guy I trust the most, even more than a Mike Will type. Like, Michael Trigg is just... So reliable, I feel like, for us now. Third down and two. We got our options, including Stripling. Man, my, Deshaun Stripling might also be pretty trustworthy in coverage as well. Slayton battling his way close to the first down, but not quite. Third down and one. Daniel Jones. He'll fake it. Barkley in protection. Jones rearing back, looking for Trigg. Oh, it is simple trigonometry for the New York Giants. Michael Trigg eating the hit of Dane Belton and tossing him to the ground as Mayfield couldn't quite put much on that, but somehow enough to get it to Shai Smith for the catch. That's a catch by Elijah Cooks, and now we're a bit more in control of this game like we'd like to be. 21 points is the lead, but that could be caught up right here! But it's not. In the battle of number fours, Elijah Cooks torched Sean Murphy Bunting, but... Baker Mayfield being Baker Mayfield missed the throw. We definitely dodged a bullet with that one. We'll thank our lucky stars, but we still got to get the stop at the end of this drive. Third down. Now it's Shai Smith not able to catch the ball. The Lions are just not executing. That'll bring up a fourth down. Baker protected. Oh, Hawkinson with the catch. Man, TJ Hawkinson. 
I don't want to say he's gotten the better of Derwin James today, but I think you can say that as, oh, Devontae Adams. He'll get the better of most guys, including Adore Jackson on that touchdown grab and this subsequent two-point conversion. Man, that, that's, that's a tough drive to swallow because those are just plays where I mean, man coverage was good, but the offense made a better play at the end of the day. You just shake their hands, you tell them good play, and you move on. Kind of like what I said in that Cowboys game. Like, we can't be mad at these kind of efforts. Like, these are good efforts. It's just, you know, the results are not coming in our favor. It just happens sometimes. Maybe we use up some of our luck on that Super Bowl run. I think that's what Matt is trying to tell us right now because – um, anything that we need to tilt the scale on the luck department just seems to not be dialed up so far all season long. Like third down, I can use a little bit of luck to make that play. That time, I mean, we don't need luck, man. We just need the hunter on the prowl. Hunter Waller, that's his first pick of the season. Stripling downfield. Got it. The Sean Stripling. Oh, man. He is elite. The Stribble God does it again. Is there anybody that can cover Deshaun Stribbling downfield? Because that was, I, I think it's Will Johnson to name it at, uh, cornerback. As I know this is Derwin James, the name of our safety, who gets another pick. That's his second pick of the game and his fourth of the young season. But, yeah, um, that, that Johnson guy with the X Factor, he's like 95 or 96 speed. He is as fast as Stribbling, and Stribbling still beat him downfield. So... I mean, it just gives us all the confidence in the world to let that ball fly. Even Daniel Jones' noodle arm is 88 throw power. I have no fear when I throw it to Stribling because, I mean, he's beaten just about everybody we've had him test so far. And it makes offense pretty easy when you can just tap the button and watch the guy run by everyone, right? As Derwin James gets a hat trick of interceptions in this game. Derwin is just toying with the Detroit Lions now. And what a fun little toy Derwin James has been to add to our defensive squad. As we'll get this pitch off. Oh, Daniel Jones is a magician working that triple option. Gets it off to Kenne. And that's going to be the first down the ice this game. We're going to take a couple of knees and get out of Motown with the win. Move our New York Giants to a 2-2 two two start. So we we did not start the season well at all, but we're starting to get back to our winning ways here, and hopefully that can ease the tension in the crowd amongst the fans that we can get our Giants back on path here. So far, so good on that route. But, yeah, that's going to do it for this game, man. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, Saquon's still Saquon. Trig's still Trig. And now we got the Stripple God on our side. Defensively, like Tibbs, Ajunglory, they're doing their thing. Uh, you know, the big guys inside, they plug it up. Sean Murphy bunting, Adore Jackson, they do their thing. But now we got Derwin James as well. So our additions, I mean, they're definitely showing up so far this season. So it's shaping up to be a pretty fun season for our New York Giants. So leave a like in the video if you guys enjoyed what you guys saw today. Subscribe for more Man 23 gameplays, and I will catch you guys next time. Thank you, as always, for watching.